All right, though, the succession laws, they determine who can inherit and who is in line for what. Now, we have Agnatic Cognatic Gevelkind. Now, Agnatic Cognatic means that both boys and girls are eligible heirs, which is very important. You wouldn't want to change this um, because Cognatic for the girls really only means that unless there's a male heir, she may inherit something. If there is a male heir, any male heir, she's not going to inherit anything. So we're not in danger of splintering our realm if we have a girl. So these are a really good backup plan, which is kind of sad to say, but it takes a long, long time in this game to build up to have equal status for women. It's not impossible, but it takes. Now, earlier when we started this, we saw that we couldn't have tennis tree succession. And I said I didn't know what that means. So here we get the chance to figure out what it means. It says the ruler and all vassals at one and two ranks below can nominate an heir, a tanist, from among the members of the ruler's dynasty. Vassals will tend to favor all the members from the other branches of the family, especially claimants. Right, okay, so what does that mean? One or two ranks below can nominate an heir. That basically means that since I'm a count, anyone below me, be it a bishop or a mayor, has a right to vote on who becomes our heir. If I were a duke, a count and a baron and a mayor might be able to vote. If I were a king, only dukes and counts are able to vote. If I were an emperor, only kings and dukes are allowed to vote. Now it also says something about their tendency to vote. So all the members from other branches of the family, especially claimants, meaning they're not going to go for my choice, really. I'm not sure why I would want Tanistry or elective Gavelkind. So right now, as it is, we're going to leave it because Gavelkind just means it's split up between all our eligible heirs, mainly the males, and this only means we need to acquire a higher title above count or have only one heir to not splinter our realm upon our death. For now, it's not an issue because we only have this one thing, so we're not going to lose the title. But later on, it's going to become important. However, there are no succession laws that are really sensible like primogeniture uh, or ultimogeniture, so only the firstborn or only the lastborn heir inherits everything. For this, we have technology and we want to go in legalism, which unlocks us some more choices in terms of succession laws as well. This is where we want to go. All right, okay. So we have found someone in our court who might fancy us. So we can go and make a move on her, you know, it's good to be a ruler. Or we can see the impropriety of it and not do it. <laughs> now, it's not the worst thing to do it, so we're just gonna. He's proud, so he wouldn't re reject a good option. And it's good to be the chief uh, because we gave her a good tumble. 16 year old girl already abused <laughs> such an early age now we could marry everyone in our court really but it doesn't help all that much what is sensible though to make sure our court likes us is we can check if any one of these might want to marry as their ambition actually i don't see his ambition he might not even have any <laughs> right let's see Anyone have an ambition to get married? Anyone have an ambition at all? Uh, yeah, he. He would like to get married, so let's find him a wife. And why not give him our lover? It doesn't really give us anything, but let's do it anyway. He's going to be happy. Right. So the game, we're going to go slow because too much is happening otherwise. It can safely play at three. During war, I always suggest 
turning down the speed because sometimes things happen a little bit too quickly. Much quicker than it's good. So, while we wait, we could already do something uh, with our personal levies because we have tribe. We could go raid. And he has quite a bit of garrison, so we're not going to be able to break through all of this. By the way, we should look at our county, actually. We can upgrade stuff, but we don't have enough prestige or anything else, really, to make it worthwhile. So around here, there's some that are kind of okay to raid, but not many. So we're going to wait until maybe some raiders are being risen with whom we're going to team up. And then we're going to go raid. Let's hope no troops are being spawned before we're ready to actually create a war. If troops are spawned, we're just going to create a tributary war or something like it. Just so the troops don't go to waste. It's all fine. There's always a use for everything in this game. And again, we're not going to click through all the menus, not talk about everything that's here. We're going to go through things as they happen and appear. This is more of a play along thing. And uh, your events will vary, but just seeing how you don't have to stress, how you don't have to become paranoid about what's going on with all of these buttons. What can you do? It's fine. I'm going to show you the most easy way to play this. So, we have received news, our lover is pregnant. And, uh, let's hope she can proceed. Nope, she failed. So, <laughs> um, our kinsman, our, our court tutor, our spy master now knows that his child isn't his child. And he has the trait, uh, or the, rather the modifier, cuckolded, which gives him a minus 100 opinion of us. Which is okay, because him being our spy master, well, it hurts us a little bit, because he will be able to hurt us as being the spy master. He might be able to dispose of us by assassinating us. Or helping someone else facilitate an assassination. So, but him being our spy master, it's likely he's going to die in the line of duty at some point. So it's not so bad. It's all alright. Apparently it doesn't matter to him that uh, the unfaithfulness was before. Let's talk about our wife's trait really quick as we're here. As you can see, this is our number. The number outside of the brackets, uh, or rather parentheses, is the skill that our character personally has. And you can see where these traits also come from. Behind there, you can see the state level. And as you can see, our counselor's influences and our spouse influences as well. So having a good spouse modifies this a little bit. Having good counselors, as you can see, does a lot more. And the state intrigue is in the end the one that counts on the state level. So if we look at how many troops we can muster, this would be much lower if our state marshal were in 30. We would have less that we could rally to our war banner. So, our lover has become known as the Unfaithful since uh, she was found out. And she is an adulteress, giving her negative modifiers. <laughs> right, let's speed this up a little bit because nothing is happening currently. And we're mainly waiting for events. And while we're at it, just click all these away. None of this really matters to me. Also, I enjoy the music for a moment. Just really good. Alright, so... Our lover... Um, she's unhappy. Because... She can't publicly create him. I could go visit her and comfort her, giving her a health modifier, which helps her survive the pregnancy. But I feel like people are already a little bit upset. Then again, who cares? I'm chief. I must visit her. <laughs> and always, you can see, just hover over things. There's tooltips. The tooltips are god in this game. They're going to tell you everything you need to know about everything.
So the minimap here is just really so you know where you are. All right, the church is a greedy thing and they're taking gold from us. Okay. While passing judgment onto criminals from the safety of your throne, a young noble is brought before you. You quickly come to the conclusion that the man is indeed guilty. Condemning him might not be the wisest choice as he is of noble birth. If you were to pardon the man, he might prove himself useful to you as he would be in your debt. So we could release him, damaging our prestige, but he will owe us a favor. We don't need favors currently. Favors are a mechanic that works within the council. I generally don't use it. Uh, it's probably very powerful if you do use it right. I don't, so we don't care. Um, again, you don't need to facilitate everything in this game. You don't need to use all that it has to offer, okay? So let's say being of noble birth means nothing to the dungeons with him, which isn't the bad thing either. We go into, in, into our intrigue tab. Sadly, it doesn't become our prisoner from the event, but it's okay. Here are a lot of actions, decisions that you can make. We're going to get into those once they come up. But something interesting here is adopting different types of rulership, the feudalism or the merchant republic. These have various requirements and are a little bit hard to get. You need to build up in here to a certain point. Um, and we have reached a point where we can build things. We could build an earthen hill fort, which we need to adopt feudalism later on. And it increases our levy size, the fort level and our retinue size, which is good. We're going to build this cost us gold now we're poor now retinues are troops that you can raise outside of your general army they cost in a tribal society they cost uh, prestige mostly to gather unless you want to go for gallo glass which is um, some cultures have their specific special retinue unit um, we're not going to want to have those, but just 150 light infantry costs us 25 prestige to raise once we have enough space to raise them. They have a unit weight, basically. Like these use 105 of the retinue cap. These use 170. So adding 100 through our earthen hill fort allows us to raise one of these top two because everything else costs much more. So we could have 100 light infantry plus 50 archers, or we wait a little bit, build up more and allow us some light cavalry plus light infantry. Cavalry is very, very strong. Let's continue here. All right, so a son was born to our lover and now we get to have a choice about him because he's a bastard. We could legitimize him which generally isn't a good idea unless you're running low on heirs or your heir is in danger of dying before reaching age or for any other reason. Now, you could acknowledge him, which allows him to be married for alliances. Um, but if he has children, they're going to be of a new dynasty. Now, if you denounce it, People are still not going to like us, uh, but at least we're not going to get an opinion malice for our wife, for example. But since we don't really want more children, it's fine for her to hate us. <laughs> really, it's fine for her to hate us. So we're going to acknowledge him. This way we can marry him off for a new alliance somewhere, which we're going to do basically immediately. Right, okay, and our court physician is worried about him because he is sickly, which lowers his health. Now, health works quite peculiarly in this game. Each character has a base level of 5 health. Um, I'm not entirely sure why we can actually see it. Um, b -b -b somewhere. But, base level 5 health. So, the health modifies the lower it is, the higher the chance they die. So a sickly child has a 50% chance of surviving infancy. 
Our court physician might be able to help this. Let's set a focus for him and let's have it be some diplomacy. Let's see if we can't secure a good alliance. All right. So the treatment of our court physician was successful. The child already looks much more energetic than before. And the treatment has given him plus one health for three years. Meaning for the next three years, he has a slightly higher chance of surviving, which is great. So our court chaplain, our physician has done a real good job. And the modifier shows up here. Successful treatment. Now let's pause a bit and check if we can't secure a cool alliance <laughs> somewhere. Let's see. Do you want do you want a bastard? No? No bastard for you? I don't think we're going to find anyone else. So let's check from this list. Pictish. Chief the Mofidach. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Let's see who else we can get. More Pictish. That's just basically chiefdoms up there. Do we have someone who's Irish? Anglo Saxon might also be interesting. Let's see if we can't get. Ha! <laughs> Orc. <laughs> interesting. Welch? Welch might be cool. Oh, that's pretty close by. That's a close-ish county. He has some men. Let's get him. Let's secure that alliance. So, he's going to agree. And once he has agreed, we are going to try and form an alliance, which he accepts. So, on this front, we're already doing pretty decently. This is our third alliance. We can also check with all the other people we have pacts with, like him, if he would like an alliance. But he doesn't. <laughs> Let's see if there's more alliances to be formed. Doesn't look like it. If our spouse actually were a countess or a duchess or a queen, we might be able to form an alliance with her. But if she is nothing, only my wife, which is something to make this abundantly clear. Being my wife already is a something, a very prestigious something. Don't get this wrong or twisted. <laughs> um, we're not going to get an alliance out of her, which is fine. So let's have a look at us. We are also an adulterer, so general opinion of us is not the greatest, which is probably why he doesn't like us. Because he doesn't know us, he only knows about us sleeping around. <laughs> um, which kind of puts the whole... Uh, our wife uh, being a prestigious position in, 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 into question. But let's not think too deeply about such trifling matters. So this will take a while. You can see the status of the build over here as well. It's very small but it is there. And we're going to see what time brings the world has in store for us further down the road.